Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is clone an undirected graph and it has a medium level problem. So the problem is very very straightforward. It says that we have been given a connected undirected graph with n nodes and m edges although you will not be given the value of this n and m. Now each node will be have like we will have certain distinct level from 0 to n minus 1. We just have to cre create a clone of the graph. Right. Now, each node in the graph contains an integer value and the neighbors of the nodes are the nodes adjacent to the current node. So basically, this is the input. This input will not be given to us. This will input will be given to the driver code. Right. So what we have to do is, we will receive a node pointer to one of the nodes inside the graph. We have to construct the exact same graph with the help of nodes only, node pointers only and then we have to return any one of the nodes I believe then it will like itself check automatically check whether these two nodes or two graphs are same or not. So for example if I show you this is the struct node that we have. Now this has two values that is the integer value associated with the node and it also has a vectors of node which are the neighbors of my current node. Now it has some of the constructors of its own and uh, now if I show you the driver code. So inside the driver code what they have done is they have they are just calling uh, this particular function clone graph and then they are calling their own compare function. Now compare function will basically pass on your output node to this particular uh, compare function and then check whether it is correct or wrong. So if I just quickly show you the compare function as well. The compare is nothing they are just taking the previous node and the new node that you have uh, like given they will be performing some kind of traversal and check whether these two nodes are same or not. Now let me just close this. So basically you will be given a node pointer right this is what I am trying to say you will be given a node pointer you have to construct a new graph from this particular node pointer only right. So let us say this is your current node and these are the nodes attached to it. So this is the original graph you have not created anything yet this is the original graph. So let us say this is value 1, this is value 2, this is value 3, this is value 4, this is value 5. And let's say we have value 6 here and then it is connected like this right this can be a structure of the original graph now let's say we are performing dfs on this particular node so first of all what we'll have to do is we'll have to create a copy of this first node right we create a copy of the starting node and then we will start our dfs from here right we will also maintain a visited vector or in this case we cannot maintain a vector because we don't know the size so let's say we maintain a map called integer and node pointers right since so let us say we call it visited since all the nodes will have unique integer values so each of these visited positions will denote individual nodes. Now if the integer is not present in my visited vector that means it have not been visited otherwise it will store the corresponding node pointer of that particular node in my new graph. So what I am trying to say is if the integer value is not present then uh, it, is, it will not be present in the visited map that is for sure. Now let us say 1 was visited. So what is the corresponding value or the corresponding node of this particular one inside my original inside my new graph is what this particular node pointer will denote. That is why I have stored it this way. Now what I am going to do is I am going to perform a simple DFS traversal on the original graph and create new nodes as required. So let us say I started from here right for the first node I have created a node right now let us say I made a DFS call to this particular node. So the very first thing I would like to see is whether this node has been visited or not right. So this node was not visited because it is not inside the visitor vector currently so let me also write the values for this. So only node 1 is visited and let us say it will have a node pointer pointing towards currently this particular node right. Now 2 was not visited so what I am going to do is I am going to create a new node for 2 right. So I am going to create a new node for 2 and set 2 in one of the neighbors of 1 right. This is the most important part create the node only when required only when it is not only when it, only when it has not already been created and also push 2 inside the neighbors of 1 right. Once I do this my uh, new graph will look like this. Now during my traversal in my original graph I come back to 1 then I go to 3 since 3 was also not visited I create 3 so I create 3 like this now I go back to 1 
and then I try to create four because it was also not visited. So I create four. Then I come back to uh, one and then I go to five. Five also not created. So I created. And meanwhile, all of these nodes that are being created are marked as visited. So two are marked as visited, three is marked as visited, four is marked as visited, five is marked as visited, and let's say six is also now marked as visited because we are going to create a new node six from here. Now let's say when we make a DFS call starting from here to one, right? What will happen? It will not create a new node because this node is already present inside my visited vector here. So instead of what I'm going to do is, instead of what I'm going to do is, I am going to create only a link to this particular new node. I'm not going to create a new node. I'm just only going to create a link to this particular new node. So this will get connected to this, right? So interestingly, you see, till now, we only discussed how we are creating an edge like this, right? Passing to the next node. But when you think about this particular case, what happens when a node has already been created, we don't create a new node, we just create a link to that particular node, right? And let's say you were at 5, right? So when you visit the neighbors of 5 in the original graph, 6 is one of the neighbors for sure, but 1 was also one of the neighbors. We never discussed the case about 1 because I wanted to tell you this way. What happens when one of the neighbors has already been there? is already there in the visited vector, we don't create a new node now, we just create a link. So you see, as in the case of 1 and 5, 1 is one of the neighbors of 5, but it is already present inside my visited vector. So I don't create a new node, instead I just create a link. Similarly, we'll go for 4 and 1, and 3 and 1, and 2 and 1, right? So you see, this is what we have to do. Let me summarize what we are going to do here. We are going to maintain a visited vector map integer comma node pointer. This is going to my visited vector, right? Uh, make make a simple DFS on the given graph. If child is not visited, create a new node. Else, use the node that has been already created right now create a link to the child or in other words push the child into the current node neighbors right now at the end what we have to do is uh, we have considered all of these points and mark the current node as visited. This is also very important. Whenever you reach any node, you will also have to mark it as visited. So I believe that uh, this covers all the things. And if you follow all of these things carefully, then the code will definitely work. So let me show you what I've done. So first of all, I've created a start node that is new start. And it is nothing just a copy of this particular node, right? It is going to use the same node value. Now I have created a visited vector or visited map in this particular case. And I just call my DFS in the start node and passing the node as well. So basically, what why, I, why am I passing two nodes? So one is the current node and one is the original node. For each node, I want the corresponding original node. This is my node that I have created. This is the original node that was given to me in the input, right? That is why I have both of them. Now, if I, now currently I mark my current node's value as current node. So basically, what I am trying to say here is this value will be present at this particular node pointer, right? I am saving it this information. Now I am just going to visit the children of the original node and I created a Boolean expression not visited. So basically I am trying to find this child's value inside my visited map, right? So if this is equals to visited dot n, that means if this, this will become true and the current child is not visited. I create a node pointer new child. If it, this value is not visited, I'm going to create a new child using the node constructor. Otherwise, I'm going to set the value of new child as visited of child value. So basically, if it is already visited, I'm just going to grab the node pointer from my visited map. Now, once this is done, I'm just going to push back this new child into my current node's neighbors. And if not visited, that means the current child has not been visited. I'm going to call a separate DFS call 
to that particular new child and passing the corresponding node in the original graph, right? So this is how you can solve this particular problem. You could have also find some way to do it with DFS or BFS, the breadth first search, but that is totally fine. You just need any traversal method to go through the graph and just create a copy of it. At the end, you can just return your new start, that is the node pointer that we created in the beginning. And this is how you can solve this particular problem. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So you see this passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If it is it, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.